one of the areas that we look at in the fixed income portfolio management and construction class is positioning of fixed income portfolios based on your view of how things are going to change in the outside environment. And what we think about the drivers of fixed income portfolios, movements in rates, movements in spreads. We also think about what are the drivers of performance. So we think about risk and performance, what drives them. And we think about how we might position the portfolio for those kinds of things changing. We talk about duration. And we talk about how duration is a measure of sensitivity to rates rising and how if you're expecting rates to rise, expecting yields to rise, you might want to shorten your duration because when rates and yields rise, bond prices drop. But the longer your duration, the more they drop by. So if you shorten your duration, you lessen the impact of the rising yields on your portfolio. And we have some examples that we use. And this is an example that we build up to and we use to illustrate some particular points. And this example is around fixed income investing when you're expecting yields to rise. And to help people, I give them an example. My example is based on the German government bond curve or the Bund curve. And I spent a lot of time searching for an example where over a year the yields go up roughly in parallel. And here, over two years, it's broadly a parallel shift up of 20 basis points over the year between March 2013 and March 2014. And this is shown in the UBS Delta, which is a system we use for many of the examples in class. So yields are going up here. And we imagine that you're managing money versus a benchmark. It's March 2013, and your benchmark includes 100 million of the five year Bund. And on that part of your investments, the parts that's invested versus that part of the benchmark, we ask the question okay, where do you want to invest your money? Do you want to invest in the two year, shorten your duration? Do you want to invest in the five year, match the benchmark? Or do you want to invest in the 10 year and go longer in terms of duration? And it turns out that we have investor A who decides to lengthen their duration versus the benchmark buying the 10 year bund, and investor B who shortens their duration versus the benchmark buying the two year bund. So we ask the question which investor outperforms on the bund holding? And many people will say, well, because we're expecting rates to rise, and indeed they do rise, okay. When we think about which investor outperforms, many people will say it's investor B who bought the two-year bund because rates were rising, as we see here on the right. But actually, when we look at the performance over the year shown in this table here, when we look at investor A in the 10-year bond, they earn 38 and a half basis points, whereas investor B in the two-year bond they earn 0.07 basis points, almost nothing. And the benchmark earns 18 and a half basis points over the year. So actually, investor A ended up outperforming, even though we thought investor B would. So we seem to have confused everyone. What's going on? Well, the point here is we're investing for a whole year. It doesn't just matter that when rates rise, the value of the bonds drops. What also matters is what you're earning for owning the bonds. And notice that the yield on the 10-year bond is much higher than the yield on the five-year, which is much higher than the yield on the two-year. So those components of the performance aren't just the movements in rates and spreads that you see in interest rates and spread column, but they're also carry. We're also earning a return from carry. And you see that whilst based on movements in the curves, so based on interest rates and spreads, the 10-year bund owned by investor A would have lost 62 basis points. The five-year would only have lost 27, adding up the two columns, and the two-year would only have lost 14 basis points. You, when you add in the carry that you earn, 14 basis points on the two-year for investor B, 
46 basis points on the five-year on the benchmark and over 100 basis points on the 10-year for investor A, the total ends up working out that investor A outperforms the benchmark and investor B underperforms the benchmark, even in this rising yield environment. The key being that this is over a whole year. And actually, you have to think about the carry that's being earned. You can think about the components of the carry here, the coupon being received, which is split into cash and excess income in this system, and the pool to par effects from rolling down the curve and from the price heading towards par. And we go into detail on these different components in the course. As well as thinking about carry as being a cause of investor A outperforming, we can also think about it a different way. Really, the point is that performance has time as an input, has carry as an input. But another way of expressing that is that actually, when expressing a view on the curve, we should express that view versus the forward curve. The light blue curve here is the Bund curve at the beginning. The dark blue is the Bund curve at the end. But we've added a third curve, which is the green curve. And the green curve is based on the light blue curve. Where is the market pricing par bond yields, so yields on bonds, in a year's time? And what we see here is that the upward sloping curve, when we calculate the forward par bond yield, so where the market is pricing the bond yields a year later, we see the green curve is quite a lot higher than the light blue one. It's also higher than where rates ended up, where the yields ended up, the dark blue curve. So even though we knew where yields were going and we were right, what we didn't know is that we need to express our view versus the forward curve. So it looks like yields are going up on paper from the light blue to the dark blue, but actually yields are dropping relative to the forward curve. And so lengthening your duration will cause you to outperform. In the class, fixed income portfolio management and construction, we have lots and lots of little examples like this that we build up and then we put them all together into a big exercise where students get to construct their own portfolios and think about managing them in terms of their risk and the performance and putting it all together, just like that small example that we've just seen there.